Hey y'all, hey y'all. Welcome to my channel. This is Straight Facts Commentary where I give you my unpopular opinions in everything pop culture. So please, please, please stick around and subscribe for more. Hey y'all, I am back again with another video and in today's video, you see the title, you see the title, we are going to be reacting to your unpopular opinions today, not mine actually, but yours. I had you guys go into the comment section of my community tab and drop some unpopular opinions, so we are going to be discussing them today so if you're interested in that female rap pop conspiracy theory strain topics my popular opinions whatever i feel like getting into for real go on ahead and subscribe and let's get into this video okay so before we get started with the unpopular opinions i just want to preface how this video is gonna go in case somebody's confused um the videos that you see on screen of anyone are just people in pop culture whether that's female rap pop stars singers whatever um it's not going to be in correlation to wh whoever is being discussed on the screen so if i read an unpopular opinion and we're talking about it and you see rihanna but i'm not talking about rihanna that's why it's literally just something for you to look at pop culture girlies in general so don't pay any mind to the people on the screen just listen to the unpopular opinion anyway let's go ahead and get into the first one Okay, y'all, so here's one of my subscribers' first unpopular opinions. It says, as a rapper, you should have the ability to write your own rap slash freestyle. That's what made rap what it is in the first place. The uniqueness of the artist's ability to create their own sounds, metaphors, double entendres, etc. Uh, there's nothing wrong with assistance on hooks or and a few bars, but if you can't write the majority of your own or on your own, you're not a rapper. I think the reason most artists can't write nowadays is due to lack of articulation. This is absolutely correct and I agree. <laughs> i'm sorry guys i'm stupid but um uh, <laughs> yes i agree with that i i have always and i actually didn't like understand that or funda fundamentally care about that when i was younger listening to rap because like as teens and kids listening to rap you might not know the history of it you might not care you just hear a song and you like it right but as i got older i started to really understand like oh like you said foundationally this is what rap is built off of and so i grew to respect it not only did i grow to respect it i'm a writer myself and i've always been a writer so when i connected that oh this is what it means to be a rapper to write your music and for you to have done it and for it to come from a creative space of your own i truly respected that i've been writing my entire life like novels and short stories and poems and da -da 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 -da, i've always written so knowing that connection uh, you know a rapper has that same similarity i was like oh bomb bet right cool so yeah no i 100 percent agree with that um if you're not actually writing for real then you're just writing what somebody else gave you someone else's actual art concept and ideas you know what i'm saying so that's not cool i mean it's cool you know you can get a hit record off of it or whatever but it's not coming from you it's not really coming from you so at the end of the day yes i agree with that moving on to the next unpopular opinion okay next one unpopular opinion nikki's music isn't as good as it used to be she only gets the numbers due to her fan base mass supporting it Ooh, some of them even agree that her music isn't good anymore Ooh, y'all are being messy now with this listen y'all uh i'm like agreeing with this one and the reason why i say that is because i you guys know i fundamentally say on this channel that i didn't care for pink friday too like that i just didn't okay i just didn't there was just production wise it wasn't you know that great to me i couldn't stand songs like everybody that got popular they were very very annoying records uh everybody was a very annoying song um a lot of the songs on pink friday too were just like you know they were fine but they weren't like you know a very solid one that i still like is barbie dangerous that one has grown on me a ton but there's not a lot of them that are like that that are just like just really gonna stick with me like i said like um it's really nikki's past work for me i loved queen like queen is a way better album than pink friday too and i'll stand that i don't care i don't care the <laughs> queen was better um you know roman reloaded the pink print like the original pink friday nothing is going to compare to that i don't care how many albums Nicki minaj puts out you know from now until the end of her career pink friday is the og you know pink friday 2 does not compare at all you know what i'm saying yeah no i agree nikki's older music 
is her better music. Like Pink Friday 2 is nothing compared to some of her earlier work. Um, even Queen. Queen is better than Pink Friday 2. And you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it seems like as she drops more and more albums, the quality of it goes down to, to me, to me. Um, you know, so hopefully that's what I'm saying. I hope this next project, whether it's Pink Friday 3, um, you know, that it goes up, not down more than Pink Friday 2 for me. Um, but, you know, of course the fans are going to say differently, you know, the stands are going to say differently. But like, for example, the song that she previewed on uh, on that clip, Ma- Mamita, Mamita, don't, mm-mm, that sounds awful. Mamita sounds awful. Sorry. Sounds awful. Um, and a couple of other snippets she previewed, I was like, ooh, are these the new songs? You know what I mean? So hopefully mm, she recalibrates with that. And, you know, she takes a break after tour and she gives us a great album because it's just going down and down and down for me. You know what I'm saying? She's still the queen. She's still going to sell, like you said outsell everybody but the quality of the music for me is not what it used to be you know that's definitely correct okay so my next opinion is half joking y'all will launch any light skin girl into stardom mariah the dropout miss poopy janae Iko. but when i needed colorism to benefit to and fka twigs y'all didn't help us make them bigger than they should be oh my gosh well, that's one thing. I will say you're correct about that. Colorism is not benefiting Tanache at all. You know what I'm saying? And colorism is a real thing, so we're not going to get it twisted here. But it's not in it's not working in Tanache's benefit. Um, but yeah, I do agree with that when it comes to um, Twigs, like FK Twigs. Um, I'm just not the biggest fan of Tanache. I'm not saying she's not talented. Like, I just personally don't get into her like that. Um, she can really dance. I don't think she's the best singer in the world, but she can really dance. But I'm not really, I'm not the biggest fan of her music, but that's no shade to her. But FK Twigs, for sure, I agree in that capacity. Like, there are artists that should be a lot bigger than what they are because they are extremely, extremely talented. And, you know, the whole light skin privilege thing isn't benefiting them. <laughs> <laughs> and their talent isn't shining through for people to see them so it's really sad um but moving on to the next opinion okay next unpopular opinion my unpopular opinion is even with the controversies with katie people can't take away her achievements and her impact in pop music no modern pop star can achieve six top 10 hits like she did with the teenage dream era I absolutely agree with this one too. Like for sure. Yes, Katy Perry is, she's flopping right now. She's flopping right now, but nobody is going to be able to do what she did, especially with the state of pop music that we're in right now. Yes, we have pop stars, but they're not starring like that. The only person who's really starring like that right now is Sabrina. Uh, Everybody else who is like a considered a newer pop girl or whatever isn't really mm, doing much. So what Katy did back then was truly remarkable. And I don't know if it can be done again honestly i mean we'll have to see we'll have to see but the state of the music industry that it's at now mm, i find that very hard to uh yeah so anyway moving on okay next unpopular opinion i see people online nowadays criticizing music so heavily whether that be lyrics production etc when in reality music doesn't have to be that deep some music is just there for the fun of it i mean yeah music can just be there for the fun of it but i mean me as a musical critic channel (laughs) i'm not gonna necessarily agree with this uh, opinion um i love to analyze music production um lyrics delivery flow cadences i feel like all of those things are fundamental properties of reviewing music and understanding the complexities of a record so you know for me uh it's it's i it's one of my favorite things to do it's it's so fun to me like so no i i don't necessarily agree with that i think if it's done in a way of like if you're analyzing something or critiquing something and it's done in a way that's tasteful it can be done for anything you just have to know how to do it anyway moving on to the next opinion I honestly feel like Lotto should have named her album Lover Girl because that's low-key what the vibe of the album gives. A lot of people say her album is good, she just doesn't have a big enough fan base, which is true. Maybe she needs to switch her lane and do pop rap. After Big Energy and Lottery, she would have ate with that sound. I definitely do feel like it's due to Lotto's fan base because a lot of people really, really loved her last album. But honestly, Lotto is one of the only female rap girls that has me stumped in terms of what I feel like they should do because she's gone pop that didn't necessarily pan out for her except for big energy 
Um, you know, she's doing this whole Atlanta play thing with her album um, and going through the phases of that. Um, people received it well, but it still didn't sell that well. Um, so she has me stumped as to what she really needs to do. And normally I know um, what direction I feel like a female rapper should go in, whether it be PR or musically or anything. But with Lotto, I, I'd be stumped. I'd be like, I don't know what she got to do in order to um, win over the majority of people because she's been out for a long time. So everybody knows who she is, you know. So I don't know what direction she should go, to be honest, but she is talented. I will give her that. I don't want remixes anymore. If all they do is extend, replace the second verse with a feature. I'd prefer a new song as a collab because we get new music and a great use of both artists working together to create a joint song. Nowadays, remixes are such poor quality and sound the same. Yes, no, I agree with this. Like, okay, for example, a lot of Ariana Grande's recent remixes, like the one she did with Mariah Carey, um, even the one they did, uh, she did with The Weeknd, um, any if you just think of any remix with ariana grande being in it has been exactly that where it's just like they take out a piece of the song and replace it with the person's verse which i guess would be considered a remix right but i don't like remixes in general there's very rare remixes that i listen to i always like the original more um it feels like the remix isn't needed and half the time the person who's added to the remix isn't really adding anything to the song or quite frankly ruins the song like the boy is mine remix didn't care for that the mariah carey remix didn't care for that the only i like the weekend's remix barely um the song that they did um the, on the weekend song so yeah remixes are just yeah like you said i'd rather the two artists collaborate and kind of remake the song entirely like the artist redoes their verses you know what i'm saying but they don't do that they just clip out a piece of their portion and add the new person in instead of them rewriting a new verse for the song or kind of almost redoing the song with the other person in it you know what i'm saying if you get it you get it <clears throat> but i agree for sure the current state of R&B and its decline in sales and how Gen Z and TikTok affected R&B. Um, I definitely feel like Gen Z and TikTok have affected all of music in general. So definitely R&B is going to be affected as well. But I feel like R&B has been affected before TikTok even came into the picture or, you know, Gen Z specifically or anything like that. R&B has been kind of dying out for a while now. So that's my thought on that. JT and her team missed the window to drop the JT coming music video and I noticed she slowed down on her momentum when it came to this era overall. Yes, she toured, My City was cancelled, but I really wanted to see her kick down the doors to the rap genre as a solo artist. I hope she and her label don't sleep on her potential. Yes! No, it is It is quiet now, now that you kind of mention that. that. She dropped City Cinderella. She went on tour. Yeah, she should have had a video for JT Cummins because JT Cummins was really big on TikTok, like at a certain point. Um, it's one of her most hyped songs that she performs live. So yeah, I definitely agree with that. I didn't even really think about that, but that really does deserve a music video. Um, yeah, yeah, I know her album kind of like slowed down when it came to perception and people speaking about it as much, which is really, you know, I'm sad for, but, uh, hopefully she has something else that she's doing. She's cooking up some other stuff, maybe some singles, some, uh, features, some remixes or something, but yeah, I hope they don't sleep on her either because she's extremely talented and I feel like she would definitely be a force to be reckoned with in female rap. Okay, this says Tate McRae is really underrated and should be at the same level as Olivia, Billy, and now Sabrina since she blew up. I mean, Tate has her hits, but y'all aren't appreciating her enough. Think Later is an amazing album. She is also the new Britney. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. I just I disagree with this one. Um Billy is very talented. Olivia is very talented. Um like exceptionally. Uh these women Sabrina uh Sabrina Carpenter has like this charismatic wit and energy about her and her voice is lovely um tate mccray honestly just doesn't have anything special or defining about her to be honest with you um she can dance but other than that uh and think later just was a forgettable album for me um uh, i mean i'm definitely here to listen to whatever tate puts out if it's a single or whatever but i i'm not on the like tate mccray super fan bandwagon thing you know but that's just me. And the next Britney Spears. Now, you know, you out of pocket for that. Now, you know, you out of pocket for that. <laughs>
okay next i pepsi is one of the best songs of 2024 <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh no let's get into the tea about it because yes in case anybody doesn't know um this is addison ray's song addison ray is one of the tiktoker girls who blew up some years ago um i don't listen to addison ray but i happened to come across it i don't know if it was youtube or instagram i think it was on instagram like an instagram reel i heard the song and i was like girl what is this it kind of eats so i went to go like watch the video and listen to it for real for real and it's actually not that bad like it really is a good song I, best song of 2024 i don't know about that but it is a good record like it's easy to listen to she's not like a vocalist or anything like that but it has like this energy about it diet pepsi is that girl in case somebody hasn't heard it hold on I can't play it. I can't play it. I can't play it. They're going to come snatch my video down real quick. But yeah, go listen to it. It's it's actually pretty good. Okay, so this says pop music is back. Um, I would agree, like, due to Sabrina. Now, if Sabrina wasn't here kind of taking over and, you know, filling that void and that gap that we kind of had in pop, then I wouldn't agree. But I guess uh, by terms of Sabrina, then sure, yeah. Okay, it says, I gotta say something. I think a big part of why artists are struggling is because fans are parasocial AF and fandoms are fickle as hell. Because how someone drop a song and the next day it's a flop. No, y'all are insatiable and artists are anxious. I don't blame them. Okay, so there's some tea to this. I definitely feel like artists are anxious. So you kind of got me right there too. Because an artist, like you said, can put out a song and then the next day they're saying it's a flop when nothing has come out about it yet no projections no this no that nothing you know what i'm saying it's just that the fans determined it's a flop because of how it sounds or how it looks or whatever and so artists can be anxious like oh my gosh i have to worry about fandoms every time they drop a song versus just worrying about fans or just general public they're like worrying about fandoms bullying them on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> that's where it's going to hit first. It's going to hit the fandoms on Twitter first, seemingly before it hits anyone else. So I definitely do understand how that can be discouraging to artists because they're like, as soon as they drop a song, they have to worry about getting bullied from like <clears throat> fandoms on the internet before they can actually feel good, proud, or happy about their work. So it might discourage them from putting out music unpopular opinion some artists don't deserve the level of fame and success they've reached it's sad to see real talented artists don't reach that kind of success the general public is also at fault for that for engaging in mediocrity i feel like that people support mediocre artists lie to themselves to like them and that the industry's goal is to push people like that that have nothing to offer i definitely agree that there are many artists that don't deserve to be famous and that these record labels and major you know management and whoever pushed them and so you know the general public is going to engage with these people probably because they are you know they're popular and they have something salacious about them that makes people want to engage um but yeah there's a lot of artists we can name artists from <laughs> starting to now for hours about how many people who really shouldn't be famous who aren't that talented or are stupid or gimmicky or whatever the case may be so definitely agree next unpopular opinion rollout you anticipate some releases some releases you don't even know about or you forgot about a project as fast as it dropped once upon a time a lead up to a project used to be exciting the visual concepts revealed the project's potential sonic theme the imagery stylistic reveal that indicates you've entered into a whole new era as an ambitious artist but with a lack of attention to detail storytelling and maybe even creating a world while upkeeping the imagery throughout the remainder of the era equals to non-timeless projects straight after distribution right so in other words rollouts aren't really rolling out anymore which i definitely do agree that the rollout or like the presentation of an era or you know the visuals the videos performances the whatever all of that adds and makes the era substantial and gives it some weight versus just dropping an album or dropping a single and calling it a day and we kind of move on like sabrina carpenter for example she's really done a good job of like 
setting up the stage for this era that she's in right now and it's memorable um we can think about eras in pop culture history in general with like lady gaga and Katy perry and things like that those were eras those were (laughs) Nicki minaj those were eras those were points in time which are memorable because of what we saw during that time now eras aren't really eras they're just drop the album drop the single see if it does well we've moved on and the reason for that is because these eras that we love so much are very expensive and the labels and these management companies and crap like that they don't want to pay for eras quote unquote they don't want to pay for all that crap they're going to give that to the artists who are doing well they're not going to give it to anyone else or you know put in this time and energy and eras barely anymore like normani she didn't have an era she dropped her albums and her singles and she has moved on you know these artists aren't afforded eras anymore. Okay, next, unpopular opinion. In today's age where we can stream everything for free, people need to stop calling artists failures because their fans won't buy their music. Back in the day, pure sales were a defining factor, but there are way too many ways to listen to songs and videos now and not have to buy, in my opinion. Artists aren't failures because of this. Streaming changed the game for them. If artists want to go back to pure sales, then only release music videos on platforms where people can buy them only. I do agree that the dynamics have shifted now that, like you said, music is consumed in multiple ways versus before it was just, you know, pure sales off of CDs or you know, just watching music videos, but now it can be consumed in so many ways that it's like, what defines, you know, a sales for an artist? Well, really now it's all encompassing. Everything defines it. And because it's so, everything is so accessible, like you said, (laughs) you know, all the streaming, all the YouTube, all the, you know, the TikToks and everything is being consumed. It's really hard to place your consumption in one area to focus on an artist's success you're kind of spreading it out, spreading it thin. And so again, like you're saying, like what defines the success of an artist, um, you know, sales wise. And I feel like that does have to get reevaluated and reassessed as to, okay, what is the defining metric of like success for an artist right now? It just seems like it's, it's everything. It's not one thing. It's not just streaming. It's not just YouTube views. It's not just, um, you know, pure sales for, physical copies it's like everything so i think there should be you know now that we have streaming incorporated a new way to define what makes an artist like successful right now i guess the only thing that that's that's for is first week sales which is uh getting a little complicated right now with the public okay so the next opinion is unpopular opinion megan Thee stallion just doesn't hit anymore she's so hyped up right now Ooh, man. <laughs> um, listen, yeah, her last album for me didn't do it for me like that. Like, there's a couple of songs I like, like Find Out. That's one of my favorite songs off the album. But in general, uh, like, like I said before, I've said this before, the era visually for me was a lot better than the music itself, which it should be the music is better than the visuals. No, the visuals have been better than the music for me um and then she's you know the mamushi song yeah it's going up for her you know on tiktok and stuff like that but it's a very annoying record after a while if you keep listening to it and also i'm pretty sure the moment with mamushi has came and gone already and it's like i really like never play though i really like never play i don't think that really went anywhere though um yeah it's not it's not the same i miss her i miss her tina snow days you know, and things like that, and um, fever, and you know, those types of times. I, I really miss those times. It's like, yeah, now for me, Megan is just not, you know, she's still talented, but it's not, it doesn't have that same feeling that I used to get listening to her music that I used to, you know? I don't know. It's, it's something that's just different. I don't know what it is. Okay, next opinion numbers don't matter. So we're getting to the point where it's starting to get like that like it's i wouldn't say a hundred percent like i a hundred percent agree with it because again like i emphasize these artists are attached to major record labels management and they have to make money back so you know having sales for albums and singles and vinyls and whatever they're doing it impacts them uh, you know as mainstream artists but it's getting to the point now where it's like everybody's freaking flopping like right now like literally like from major artists 
to the smallest of artists to the artists in the middle. So I, I definitely wouldn't say this if I was reading this a year ago or two years ago. Um, but now in the climate of music that we're in, it's starting to get to that point. Yeah, it's starting to get to that point where uh, everything matters and nothing matters at all. Uh, Katy Perry's 143 album is the best album of the year. Um, heavy disagree. Uh, I only like, like, two songs. The album, it, it's like this electronic pop, you know, inspired album, but it, it really lacks a lot of depth and story and energy and life, honestly. It's just an electro club pop album, but there's really nothing special about it. The Billboard charts are outdated and need a new methodology. Slightly, yeah, because it's like artists are going number one, but then toppling off of the charts, you know, some of these artists in a matter of weeks. And that didn't used to be what happened with number one records. Number one records used to stay number one for so long that it's like months and we're still sitting in the top ten or number ones. Number one records now come and go. So... Do we need a different type of charting system to determine like, okay, uh, (laughs) how number ones that are staying top number ones are illegitimate and the number ones that are toppling off of the number one spot in three weeks, how real was that number one, you know? Next, Y2K honestly didn't deserve the hate that it got. I did criticize it when it came out. But the songs did grow on me. Sometimes music can just be simplistic to the ears and we should be able to accept music that doesn't have much depth or complexity to it all the time. Yeah, I agree with that. There's a lot of people that I listen to who, you know, similarly similarly to Ice Spice aren't really that depth and complex. Um, I didn't really care for the album in its totality, but there were a couple of songs that I did like and that I actually still stream. Um, When I reviewed the album, I said what songs I liked and people were like, oh, are you trying to say the album was good? I'm like, what the hell? No, I literally just said the songs that I thought were cute off the album. Papa, I still think that that song is cute. Um, what was the other song that I listen to sometimes? Also, Plenty Sun. I still listen to Plenty Sun. You know what I'm saying? It actually, certain songs go hard in the car because of the beats. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that there was anything wrong if you liked a couple of songs off the project. The, the project in total, like the whole album, no, there wasn't a lot to it. But there were a couple of songs that were cute that I liked. So, yeah, I agree. Um, I can't stand Billie Eilish. He's very annoying and a massive pick me. Oh, um, I don't know. I mean, she does say kind of like weird things. Like there was that one interview that she did. I think I did a video on it a while ago where she was talking about like masturbation or something and how like it's okay to do it and how like she does it to herself in the mirror or something and it was like this huge interview about like touching herself and I was thinking this is a very weird thing to do an interview about unprompted nobody asked type ish um so I do say she has like weird moments sometimes where I'm like girl where did this come from like why do we need to know this but I like Billy. You know what I'm saying? I think she's very charismatic. I think she's fun to watch. Um, her interviews are always entertaining. I like her. Um, I like her. I like mo- most of her music. So I don't necessarily have like a weird feeling about her. Like, I don't care. <laughs> you know, it doesn't bother me. Unpopular opinion. I believe comparing Cardi to Nikki was too soon and always disrespectful. Time has proven who is passionate, talented in music and who is not. Yeah, um, I definitely feel like it made sense, though, that people were comparing them when Cardi first broke out because Cardi's album sold crazy. Invasion of Privacy sold really, really well. Everybody was all over her at a certain point in time, and Nicki was the only other person who was selling as high as Cardi did. So it makes sense that they would be put against each other or compared during that time. But, you know, as you said, over time, you kind of see the passion level, the enthusiasm, the talent, this and that. And Cardi B has lost all enthusiasm, passion and care, creativity, everything. You know what I'm saying? For the art of rap, for the art of music. Um, She's not here and present with it like she was in the beginning of her career. She was way more present with it. Um, 
So yeah, at this stage, if you kind of don't see where Cardi B is mentally with it, it's like, okay, <laughs> there's really no comparing them at this point. You know what I mean? But I definitely understood it initially. Okay, guys. So those are your unpopular opinions. I tried to get all of them. Um, My apologies if I missed anyone during my editing or as I was gathering the, you know, I tried to get everyone because it wasn't too, too many comments. So I tried to just get everyone my apologies if I missed you. If I did, comment down below. <laughs> Put your unpopular opinion down below if you never left one for me in the first place. Um, I love you guys so much. And also, period. I agreed with most of you guys' opinions. And it's like, I like that, you know? But then again, even if I didn't agree with you guys' opinions, like a lot of them, that'd be fine too. Because like, I'm okay with different perspectives and different opinions on things. I welcome that discourse as long as it's respectful like I welcome that but also it's nice to know that the people who follow and support me we're on like a similar wavelength you know like I get you you get me we get each other you know <laughs> that's what I want like that's what I want I've always wanted to build a community that like we see each other for the most part we might have our disagreements and stuff like that but for the most part like we are on a similar wavelength about how we think about like the industry music things like that my little bubble my little bubble of people who get it the ones who get it who get it okay but yeah i love you and that's really it for this one and i will talk to you in the next one bye